In this presentation, we're just going to have a quick look at trees for branch and bound um, uh, operations. What we would have here, this is just to sort of like to sort of explain the terminology for tree. Okay, so this is intended for people who have not done anything like binary search trees or graph theories or anything like, uh, graph theory or anything like that, but they need to know a little bit about trees. So essentially, what we have here is we call these things. Well, we're going to call this one in this for this example nodes. And these are all nodes, okay? So we have a couple of nodes there, okay? And essentially what we have here are what they call the branches, hence the idea of a branch and bound. So these are what they call branches of a tree, okay? Now you might notice that the tree is upside down, okay? Okay, so, uh, in, uh, so this is the root up here, this is the root node. Okay, so it's the problem uh, of uh, it's what what it what it would represent the problem as originally posed before you get into any of the branches. Let's just say, for argument's sake, that we had a problem where there was and we had to branch on something like this. For example, it, this is used for integer programming, by the way. But let, what would happen there is we might get a solution uh, which is x one equals six point five and x2 equals 7 okay that might be some sort of solution to this uh, problem represented by this node what we would have to do is because we're looking for integer answers we would have to branch so what we might do is branch uh, on one of the variables that is to say impose an, an additional re restriction so here it would be x1 less than or equal to 6 and on this side it would be x1 greater than or equal to 7 okay so that's what these branches would represent okay and you would reformulate the problem with the these additional uh, with these new nodes and so on and keep going at, uh, uh, on and on and on until you get an answer okay now this is a that's just the sort of general idea now what I'm going to do is actually just to sort of uh, discuss how this might be done in a pen and paper exercise. Rather than doing the entire uh, getting a solution at each and every node as you go along, what I might do for my module that I'm teaching is that I might give you multiple answers at each node. Okay, so I'm just going to rub a couple of things out here and just get set this back up again. So what I might do, what I intend to do is give you multiple choice answers for each node but what you have to do is so the important thing here is actually know which node I'm talking about which for each set of multiple choice answers so what we're going to do is first I'll talk about the levels okay so the level for the root node is always zero so this is going to be always called node zero okay when we just below that we would have level one okay so on the left hand side we would have one a and on the right hand side we would have one B okay and level 2 we would have 2A, 2B, 2C and 2D okay but this is going to get a little bit tricky now because we're going down to level 3 we're going to have 8 of these uh, nodes okay so just to watch out there's going to be eight nodes in level three and expect the problem to get that deep okay so we would have uh, 3a, 3b, 3c, 3d, 3e, 3f, 3g, 3h okay now why I, that the reason for that is why I just explained that is because a, b, c and d is very intuitive in terms of ordering but when you get into uh, 3e, 3f, 3g and 3h it just requires a little bit more uh, thought okay now if you're familiar with binary search trees you probably think do you remember all the stuff about node numbers and key numbers okay that, that's it in binary search trees if you're familiar, familiar with that in um, mathematics that will be a correct way to do it. N number all of these nodes according to the binary search tree uh, key naming the uh, the key convention. But uh, we're working on the basis that the students have never done that in this module, so that's why we're not doing that. Okay. Now uh, let's sort of have a quick example here, 
and what would happen here for node let's say 1b okay and let's just say this is a legitimate part of the problem we're going down into that branch okay what might happen here for node b okay is that you'd be given uh, three multiple choice answers one two three four and five let's say okay so you might be given what well, let's say x1 equals 5.5 x2 equals 7 you might be given something like this x1 equals 6 x2 equals 7.1 x1 equals 6 x2 equals 8 x3 x sorry x1 is 6.4 and x2 is 7.9 uh, x1 is 5 and x2 is 10 so these might be all the various uh, solutions that you're going to get so what you might have to do is check them all to sort of see are they uh, integer answers are they integer and optimal okay are they non-integer and optimal likewise are they non-optimal for both an integer and non-integer is there a better answer in the um, in the uh, is there another answer that they are feasible essentially these are all feasible okay they are feasible solutions but also watch out for non-feasible solutions okay so what you would be just uh, required to do is for each so also look out for non-feasible solutions so what you would be required to do in this case is um, go through all of these answers check which ones are into uh, are optimal check which ones are feasible integer ants inter solutions for example this is an integer solution but it might be feasible it might not be feasible it might be optimal it might not be optimal so that it might be optimal uh, or it might be f uh, feasible but it might be suboptimal when compared to this answer so you have to pick out one of these answers according to the objective function we're not going to get into that right now but anyway this is for example a set of solutions for node 1b and with this and in your exam paper expect it's probably going to take about, about four pages okay and a lot of it would be redundant you might only need to know about five or six of them or use five or six of them but essentially what you do is work your way through the tree uh, based on the optimal solution to each the best solution from each of these five options so that's the way we're going to do it and so I'm going to do that in another presentation now. I'm going to go work through a longer solution, but it's just actually to sort of frame how to go tr how the the problem is set up and what we're looking at. So let's see how many will we have all together. We would have 15 uh, possible solutions. We're not going to go any deeper than three levels, by the way. Okay. So it just it would take too long and too much paper. So um, three uh, levels. Uh, so you might find that your optimal solution would be something like this uh, go down here and you might find it's the solution at this node here is the optimal solution the idea of I'm not going to get into it now but the idea of branching and bounding is to sort of find your way break down the problem and you find your way to the best solution like that alright that's just trees for branch and bound